What is up everyone? It's David. Welcome back to Gem Mint MTG. All right, so today I wanted to do an official price prediction on Magic the Gathering 30th Anniversary Edition singles. So I th uh, there's so much speculation going on about the impact of this set, but no one is willing to talk about what they think the prices of these cards are actually going to be. Uh, but I've thought about it a lot, and I don't mind sharing my opinion on that. So if you appreciate content like this and you enjoy the perspective that I'm about to share with you, I'd appreciate your subscription to this channel. It's the best way to support Gemint MTG with just the click of a button. Before we get into these and you see my official price predictions, I'd really like to hear what you have to say about this. So drop a comment below and tell me what you think these cards are going to be going for. If you think I am on the money or if you think I'm totally wrong, I'd love to hear what you think these cards are going to be going for. So drop, uh, drop your predictions in the comments below. All right, so let's get into these price predictions. So like I said, there's a lot of talk going around about the impact that this set is going to have. It's going to be monumental. Everybody knows that. Everybody's talking about it. But I think one of the realities of this set that we're going to have to face is the fact that these cards are probably going to be worth more than anybody wants them to be. So keep in mind that the prices that I'm about to share with you is not what I want. It's what I actually think. I think these cards are going to be worth uh, quite a bit, actually. So... Let's get started off here with the heavy hitters. I'm basically going to be doing the power nine and the dual lands because that's once you see that, that that'll kind of give you the, the gist of the, the rest of the set. Uh, but getting started off here, let's do the power nine. So official prediction on the power nine. I'm separating these by modern and retro frame because I think there's going to be quite a big disparity between those two categories. Okay, getting started off here with the Black Lotus, the big kahuna. Black Lotus, modern frame, two grand, retro frame, three grand. Hot take, I know. Thousands of dollars, I do, yeah, I think so. Collector's editions ones are four or five grand. So I think the Black Lotus, either one of them is gonna be thousands of dollars. The retro frame, I think is gonna pull around three grand. Time Twister. Modern frame, 800. Retro frame, 1200. Uh, reason for that one being so high, it's going to be legal in Commander. People are going to be playing these cards in Commander. I don't really think there's going to be that much of a price difference between the Collector's Edition and uh, and this printing of it. I People people have said, oh, there, there's no way they're going to be anywhere near as much as Collector's Edition because Collector's Edition is 30 years old. Just because something is old doesn't mean it's more valuable. I I, I don't know where this, this concept comes from. I, it applies in some things, for, for some things, sure. Uh, but in this case, I, I do not believe that there is going to be that much of a premium for the collector's edition version of these cards. These are pretty much the collector's edition reprinted. If anything, they could be just as much or uh, more desirable because they don't have the squared off corners, um, but they have a different back just like collector's edition. So I think the time twister is still going to pull about $1,200 for a retro frame, which isn't that much less than the, then the collector's edition one, uh, ancestral recall 500 and 700. Same thing for the time walk. Uh, these are not going to be as popular. I think there's also going to be the, I, I think that there's going to be a difference between the cards that are popular in commander and the cards that are popular in like old school formats, uh, vintage 93, 94, uh, because those, those players are kind of more like you know, diehard vintage players, collectors who, you know, might actually kind of shun these things and they will not be, you know, as widely accepted as some of the cards that are popular in a format like Commander, where people are much more open and welcome to proxies and reprints and things like that. So I think for the boxes and the rest of the Power Nine, you know, these prices are going to uh, fall off a little bit. And the Ancestral Recall and Time Walk are going to be 500 to 700. Now, regarding the Moxes, uh, so this is kind of similar to uh, 
to the to the rest of the power nine i'm gonna go with sapphire at 500 for the modern frame 700 for the retro frame and then 400 and 600 for the other ones uh the reason being that i i just i don't see them going much less than you know hundreds and hundreds of dollars for any of these i i this idea that these are going to be worth not that much you're going to be able to buy these for 50 to 100 bucks i do not believe that for a second i think that these are going to be going for 400 to 600 dollars a pop uh probably the six to seven hundred range for those retro frame ones just because they're they're basically a collector's edition reprint so that's the power nine so you can see i think these cards are going to be very expensive i don't think they're going to be more than the collector's edition uh, they'll certainly be, uh, well, there's, there's no revised printing of these cards, <laughs> but, um, I, I think they're going to be less than the collector's edition, but honestly, not all that much less. May, I, my, my original prediction was 25 to 50% less than collector's edition, but after just thinking about it and yeah, just thinking about it, I think they're going to be more like 10 to 25% less than collector's edition. Uh, moving on to the dual lands. So these are going to be very popular in Commander. Uh, I know that, like I said, there's go there's like this this belief that these cards are going to be shunned and that they're not going to be purchased. I, I do not believe that is true. I think these cards are going to go for a lot, uh, despite the hype on the internet about having like some kind of universal pushback on these cards. Uh, just like everything else, you know, you have to remember the outrage on the internet does not equate to real life you know situations real life results for every person that's out there screaming on the internet about this there's 10 more that aren't paying attention to this on the internet and just want cards for their deck and there's nothing wrong with that uh so the uh dual lands i think the volcanic and uh, volcanic island and underground sea are obviously going to be the most expensive with the modern frame underground sea and volcanic island at 200 retro frame 350 i think the um the collector's edition ones are going for like 450 on those so about 100 bucks less than the uh, collector's edition one and then the tundra tropical island and bayou 175 and 250 and the uh badlands taiga plateau savannah and scrubland at 150 and 200 for the retro frame uh the collector's edition prices on on everything have retraced a little bit but dual lands in particular uh they've retraced quite a bit so this this is the closest pricing to the collector's edition which i really do think that these are going to be uh if you can buy um i think i, I was looking in uh collector's edition taigas are like 230 250 um, I could see these being right up there around 200 bucks a pop. I, I really don't think there's going to be that big of a difference between the pricing, especially on, on retro frame dual lands, because they're going to be so popular to play in commander. And, um, I think as time goes on, other formats as well are going to accept these cards into those formats, formats like vintage 93, 94. Uh, so there you have it, my official price predictions. We're going to see what happens here. Okay, so that's my official predictions. I This was kind of fun. I, 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 there's so many people speculating about this, and everybody's so like, I don't know. It just seems, it just seems like, like the, um, hang on, what, what am I trying to say here? It's like everybody wants to give their two cents on this product, but nobody, everybody's afraid to say, you know, what, what they actually think these cards are going to be going for because they don't want to be wrong. I don't mind. I don't mind being wrong. <laughs> I'll tell you if I'm wrong. We'll see if I'm wrong. I'm, I'm, this is my official prediction. If you had a gun to my head, what I honestly think these cards are going to be going for, you know, I, 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 I think it's going to be interesting to compare 
you know, what I have here to what these cards actually end up going for. We'll be able to go back and see like, hey, Black Lotus retro frame for three grand. Was it actually, is it actually going to sell for more than collector's edition at five? Or is this universal shunning actually going to work? And these retro frame Black Lotuses are going to be going for a few hundred bucks. If that happens, I will be the first to admit that I was wrong and that the prices completely surprised me. But my, my going hypothesis is that these are going to be worth a lot of money. There's not going to be that big of a difference between these printings and the original collector's edition. Also, I also do not believe that this justifies increased prices for the revised or collector's edition versions of these cards. That's another thing that I've seen going around. A lot of people want to believe that, oh, this means that all these other cards are underpriced. Collector's edition is underpriced. That is not, I do not believe that that is true. Just because something comes out and it's a newer version of the old one, that doesn't mean that the old one is underpriced in the market. That just means that there's more available and they're gonna that that they could very well be the same price. Why why is collector's edition supposed to be so much more valuable than these cards when these cards pretty much look exactly the same? They have the retro frame, they have they don't have the squared corners. They're going to be in very high print quality. I, I just, I, I don't believe that if these come out and Underground C retro frame is $350 and the collector's edition one is right now selling for 400 to 450, that that price is incorrect and that it should actually be selling for five to $600. I just, I don't know. I just, I just don't believe that there's that much of a premium that should be placed on collector's edition cards. Uh, pretty much because they 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 there's there is no there's there's nothing sacred about the reserve list anymore. There's nothing sacred about these um, about that particular printing of that card. This to me is is just another printing of of a uh, of a collector's edition type product, and the uh, the age of it doesn't necessarily mean that it's supposed to be that much more valuable. I know. Probably not a very popular opinion. I'm just telling you what I honestly think. Like I said at the beginning what I want these cards to be worth, which is nothing because F this product, it sucks. <laughs> and what I actually think, you know, those aren't the same things. If it was up to me, these would all come out. These would be worthless. There would actually be this universal shunning. None of these would sell and it would be just a race to the bottom and no one would want to collect or play these cards. I just unfortunately think that that is not likely to happen. And these are what my actual predictions are. All right, I hope you enjoyed the video today. I'm curious to see what you think about these prices in the comments below. Till next time, thanks, have a great one.